here we go. How do you deal with condescension? And let's let's frame this around. Let's say that you want to ask for sex or you're trying to initiate even holding your woman's hand or kissing her on the cheek or getting a hug or you want to have dildo Tuesday. <laughs> you want to have toy Tuesday, right? And here we go. How do you deal with condescension, short, irritated responses, just a general discontent when your wife speaks to you? I want to interact, but every topic brings several pokes that I just can't find a way to acknowledge without rekindling the tone of the hummingbird. So the hummingbird is asking all these insecure questions like, are we okay? And kind of interview mode. That's what hummingbird means from Steve Forsman, right? This makes me feel weak, not knowing how to address it without seeming defensive or invoking an argument. I don't wanna seem weak or somehow invalidate her by my inability to respond. I need a way to positively address the negative, incorrect narrative in her, in her head that causes these attacks and conversation. They act as regular reminders of her negative past and fuel her ongoing distance and negativity associated with her narrative. So let's start this off. So Cynthia, how much does a woman love it when you think, wow, she's wrong, and how can I get her to think like me? The following program is intended for a mature audience. Viewer discretion is advised. This I've got to see. It's worth watching, so stay tuned. <laughs> Oh, yes. Um, you know, I think the topic of this week is is so much about feeling value in self, feeling value in your own wants, owning your own wants. And so when a, a woman feels your energy of, you know, she's wrong and you're going to convince her she's wrong, that's a complete like taking the carpet out from under her feet that you um, she's going to feel like you don't value anything about her. Uh, and above that, she's going to jump back at you with that. She's going to collapse with you about that. Um, and she's going to tell them, tell them. Yeah, I know. <laughs> she's she's like, come on, dude, don't do that. She's like telling me not to do that. Yeah, go ahead. She's going to feel pretty resentful. Because it feels like you're not, um, if you're going to take away what makes sense to her in her mind, you're, you know, basically telling her that you don't believe her, trust her, believe that maybe she's intelligent enough to know her own self. And so there's, she's, that's going to feel really harsh to her. Yeah. So jump in, gentlemen. Where have you been in this spot before? <laughs> well, there's a couple of things here. We're definitely going to answer the other question. I'm going to, we're going to give you today a very, very easy answer to this of he needs a way to address this. Okay. Where it's not going to invalidate her, not start an argument. I mean, we have a very, very simple way to do that. We're going to give you that, but I want to bounce over to you guys first. Unmute yourself and come in. Where have you thought okay, she's wrong and I need to come in and somehow, you know, strategize, wax on, wax off and get her to think like me and fix the way she's thinking. Here's where I hold tension, right? You guys come in, unmute yourself, come on in. I, uh, so I was in a relationship, um, really, really solid relationship. And um, my partner, she, she started getting really, really apprehensive about, my feelings for my ex-wife like I was still in love with her she was you know I was gonna leave her and go back to my ex-wife and all this kind of stuff um, and it made me feel pissed off because she didn't trust me she didn't trust what I was telling her she didn't trust me that you know um, and so we had a lot of arguments and I actually tried to force her to believe what I you just have to believe me. There's no, I mean, we can't get. <laughs> Please believe me. Please right? believe me. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> the whininess in the back of the head, like, like, you know, like what you're, what you're saying. And then this forceful, like, like trying to be domineering over her and just tell her I'm trustworthy. I'm a fucking trustworthy dude. As I'm being a jackass. Right. <laughs> um, and I had to change my thinking. Because when I finally changed my thinking from, oh, she doesn't trustworthy, or she doesn't think I'm trustworthy, she's not believing what I'm saying, to, oh my gosh, I have a beautiful woman that wants to connect with me. She's worried about losing me. 
um, she wants to have this connection with me. When I change that narrative in my head, then when I could, I could have space for her to go, okay, tell me more about that. And she could work it out herself. And also in that spot, I also knew that she was, she would come to the great conclusion if I just gave her time and space and patience and, and that sort of thing. Um, because I was consistently showing her that I was trustworthy rather than shouting at her that I was trustworthy. Yeah. Right. So acting and not just flapping your pumpkin pie hole. Like I like to say, right. Right. It it started with a narrative in my head. All it was just one little quick change. And then my way of being with her changed and then she trust me. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Thanks for jumping in, Jason. To watch the rest of this episode for free and other episodes, go to greatmenmovemountains.com slash VIP. Punch in your info and watch the rest for free. Get more affection, love, and sex in your marriage. Get less paralyzing fear and rejection. Never miss an episode. Watch anytime, anywhere, 3 a.m. on the toilet. Get full episodes. Greatmenmovemountains.com forward slash VIP. The C-Note Show.